Hello, Purple Eagles fans. My name is Todd Kelm, the play-by-play -play voice of the Purple Eagles, and we're happy to have you along today as we welcome you to uh, a look back at the baseball season here on Montego Ridge, and we will focus in on opening night. And to do that, we are going to need to bring in the head coach of the Purple Eagles baseball team. That is Rob McCoy. And uh, first of all, Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Coach, uh, before we get to uh, the condensed game footage, this is certainly uncharted waters for all of us here with uh, social distancing. And we're a couple of uh, Grand Island bridges apart, I think. But uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, how you're doing, uh, you know, during this time with, with no baseball and no sports. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely different. It's uncharted is the right way to say it. Um, yeah, I mean, everything's great. We, uh, you know, I'm home with my family. My wife works from home. I've got uh, my stepson who's getting homeschooled right now and my 18-month-old daughter who, you know, I, I'm i an optimist. I'm a half glass, half full type of guy. So, I mean, there could be worse things than – if I'm missing baseball, I'd rather be with my family and my daughter and, and yeah. uh, get to spend time with them. So it's fine. I mean, I, I'm at home. I can get a lot of stuff done from the computer nowadays. You know, we're not, we're not tied down uh, other than being on the field or in practice or whatever, and that's not happening. So yeah. they, they won't let us recruit. So right. it's basically like emails and phone calls and talking to people and, you know, so, but it's good. I mean, I, okay. We're, right. we're not, we don't, it's not in our DNA to not, to not be good. <laughs> right, right. Instead of uh, pitch counts and earned run averages and on-base percentages, maybe you're doing some equations and long math at home. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty good stuff. Um, all right. Well, we've got, uh, uh, we've got things just about ready to go. We're going to, we're going to roll the tape, uh, coach, as we get ready. And, and maybe before we get into the season openings, first pitch, talk a little bit about uh, uh, the excitement for your team as you get ready uh to to raise the curtain on this season yeah i mean we started the fall with just over 40 guys and uh we had our preparation was great we had uh optimal buy-in uh everyone was on the same page um you know we did things a little bit different this fall where we we did some top-down management stuff and some a lot more competing in practice and they were ready i mean this team was excited they were they were ready to go i mean you know, no part of how our season started surprised us. Uh, the guys uh, feel like they can compete with anybody. And you don't win every game in baseball, but, right. you know, um, they were excited. They, they had the right mentality, and, and guys were getting – cutting their teeth in certain circumstances. And we were, you know, we were on a great trajectory. Let's talk a little bit about your starter, Tommy Bednarski, as we fast forward here to the bottom of the first inning. A uh, leadoff hitter got on, and then, you know, after he advanced to second, it seemed like Tommy really settled in. Talk about your day one starter. Yeah, I mean, it would be impossible to not have nerves in that scenario, but we, we talked to them exactly about that leading up to the series in that, um, you know, teams like Florida State beat teams like Niagara every single time just because teams like Niagara think they have to do something special to beat them. And that's really not the case. If you just play your game, it's baseball. Anybody can win on any given day. And and he came out and, um, you know, a few nerves got to him. But I think he settled in well and he just tried to execute his game plan and the game plan that we had for him. And, you know, that was a big inning. That could have gone either way. And I think that inning, the first inning, him, him basically, uh, you know, puffing his chest out and getting the job done really set the tone for the rest of the game. And he, he really had both the off-speed stuff. We saw that to retire for outs one and three, and then the hard stuff for out number two. And there was that energy coming off the mound. Talk about what it was like when he got into that dugout after a very successful bottom of the first. Yeah, he looked at me and said, they're not going to hit me. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, once he – he knew once he got through that inning and when he uh, – we, we, you know, we challenged our pitchers to, to challenge hitters in the strike zone and – you know, you can see he wasn't painting corners. He was just going right at him. And I think when he saw he was going to get away with that, then the rest was history. Yeah, I like this clip now as we go to the top of the second inning with one out. Max Giordano hits a, a high fly ball to center. It just misplayed by the center fielder. But I love the fact that your player is, is jogging into third base on a routine fly ball where he could have dogged it down the line. I'm sure that was a, a feather in his cap to be able to get to third. 
yeah, that's who we are. That's who, that's, uh, that's our Eagles culture. That's who we are as, uh, as a team. Um, we play hard. We don't assume anything. Um, we're going to play the game as hard as we can every single pitch until the pitch is over. And that scenario, you know, that's not an ideal, not an ideal swing, but he got out of the box hard and he got rewarded for it. And it, you know, it was close and almost put us in a position to score our first run. Yeah, they got out of But that fired up the boys. That got the guys going because that's the kind of stuff that nobody nobody can tell you how hard to play. You can only tell yourself. And when other guys see you playing that hard, that's not that's energy giving. He's giving energy um, instead of taking it by just jogging down the line. Love it. I love the point defensively, bottom of the second inning, leadoff hitter smacks one, but right into the shift. The shift has been, you know, not very common now in baseball. I thought Deepa Tagli, who at first went to get that ground ball, he had to hustle back to the back and a strong throw just beat him. Yeah, I mean, we had we had really good information on a lot of their guys. Um, the, inf- the ability to get information in college baseball has gotten so much better over the last couple of years. And, and so we, we didn't, you know, as coaches, if we tell our players to have courage and, and make the tough call and make the tough decision, we have to be willing to do the same thing. So as a staff, we were talking about, like, let's not hold anything back. Let's overshift them. Let's play them and force them to do something different than what they want to do. And that was a big play. If that ball goes through, um, it happened again in the up the middle later in the game. Yeah, Both, we were standing right in front of the ball. We were standing right in front of the ball both times. Good job by Dawson Bailey to leg out an infield hit for the first Purple Eagles base hit of the season. Now we get into a bit of a jam here with uh, the bottom of the third inning. Uh, the bases are loaded. And maybe the biggest play, this is what you were talking about, an inning-ending double play. Yeah. Yeah, so that whole play just took uh, just tons of courage because uh, he was – Tommy was running out of gas. I think he ends up going four, but you could tell, like, yeah. they were starting to get on him a little bit and – and I just – I was calling pitches, and I thought, you know what, he needs – it was a 3-2 count on one of their best power hitters. And I thought, we need to go hard in right here. We need to – we we can't just give in. And Tommy executes the pitch, jams him up, uh, gets weak contact. Geo steps on second, makes a great play to first. So that was a huge play. Pitcher's best friend, right, the double play. And then we saw Benny Serrano lead off the top of the fourth inning or get a board on a base hit. Niger did not score, and here we go again with Tommy Bednarski, and he had the, the Seminoles off balance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did a great job. He executed uh, off-speed pitches and advantage counts, and um, they were a little over-anxious at the plate, too, trying to trying to get the barrel out a little bit, and, and uh, they, you know, they, were, they thought they were going to smack us around, and we just executed. So Tommy finishes with the four innings, and then we'll go right to uh, – uh, Jacob Bruning coming in. You bring in the lefty to, to start the fifth inning and, and talk a little bit about what Jacob can bring for you. Yeah, so this was set up. This was designed for us to beat them, believe it or not. I, I, uh, we had talked about – I talked to a summer coach about this one point, about the strategy of taking two starters and having them start. Um, so Tommy was going to start the first and get to the fifth, and if we needed relievers to get him to the fifth, then that's what we would do. And then Jake was going to start the fifth um, as if he was a starting pitcher um, because he was our number two. So uh, Tommy didn't need a reliever to get to Jake. And then so Jake got to treat it like a start. So when he stepped, when he toes the rubber, he's starting game, game you know, his part of game one. Okay. Then Jake had, had a runner aboard and then uh, with the ball that dropped into right field, but you got the fielder's choice. Then a, a little bit of a problem here on the missed pickoff where the runner able to advance all the way to third, pretty uh, pretty good uh, bunt base hit here to give the Seminoles the lead. Yeah, we just those are the kind of things that you know we've we've got to be able to practice practice more um, before we go south. But just bunt bunt communication, um, not not talking, making plays. But I thought Jake got weak contact the whole inning. It it just kind of escalated, and he did a good job of keeping it to one um, yeah. and settling in on that because it could have gotten way worse. And, you know, he, he was able to minimize right there, which was huge, so that he could settle in. Big strikeout to uh, end the inning. They brought in Velez. He got a three up, three down, top of the sixth against the Purple Eagles. And then Jake back to work in the bottom of the sixth inning. This is a strong inning, a couple of strikeouts and an easy fly out. This is what you're looking for from your lefty, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the, you know, both guys are sophomores, and Jake's got excellent stuff. He's worked hard. Both of them have worked hard. Their velo was up that night. Um, their off-speed stuff was sharp, and their compete level was off the charts. So anytime you can do that, and it doesn't matter who you're playing, you got a chance to win. It was an incredible job, really, by both staffs, and certainly the, the Purple Eagles played a big hand in that. Getting ahead in the count, getting ahead of the hitters, giving the pitchers, you know, that, that upper hand, uh, Niger in the in the seventh inning, the, the Purple Eagles went out in order. So I think we'll pick up the uh, the footage here as we head into the the bottom of the seventh inning. Uh, with Jake, you know, still on the mound, you see the numbers there. A good start by uh, Bednarski. Nobody out. A runner on first, and this is where he really has to bull his neck, as they say, right? You got to keep it a one nothing game. He does great work in the bottom of this frame for you, coach. Yeah, same same sort of thing with. Uh... You know, same sort of thing with Tommy sort of running out of out of bullets. You know, uh, you can we can get pitch counts up there, but it, it's just not the same in game like adrenaline. So, you know, we were monitoring Jake closely and he had thrown a lot of pitches in a few innings at this point, And he just it was just will over skill at this point for him. That's a, that's a that's a great phrase. I like that. Um, getting a, a fair amount of swings and misses, both this one and a, a batter upcoming, you know, Two and two count on the first one. Here he's ahead. One and two gets the batter to, to wave through it. How, how do you like the job by uh, Joe Tevlin there, uh, calling a good game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tev did a great job. He's a, he's a senior, so he's got tons of experience, and and uh, the guys like him back there. They feel comfortable with him, both him and Zaremba. And um, yeah, he did a great. I mean, there's really, really. I mean, the way you beat that team is that everyone does a great job, and that's really what the night was about. Is everyone did their job, and they didn't do. They didn't try to do more than what their job was. And that's easier said than done. No doubt about it on a, on a stage like this. And nice job there by, by your lefty reliever to keep a potential base stealer close to the bag and gets the, uh, the lazy pop up to, uh, to end the inning in, in the bottom of the seventh. And just a quick look here on the top of the eighth. Was the ball carrying as well? I thought this was off the end of the bat attempt, but it almost went out of the yard. Yeah, no, I think he got it pretty good. Um, okay. But um, yeah, he was out, he was out front a little bit, which is why he didn't go out. He's got tremendous power the other way, so I, I wouldn't have surprised me if that ball would have gone out at that point. We get a peek into the bullpen as uh, as it turns out, the first two players reach. You have uh, Alex McKinnon, the big righty, is up, and and after that second player reaches, well, there it is. Alex is going to have to uh, uh, cross the lines and, and head on into the ball game. It's, it's good work there by Jake. Looked a little disappointed, but like you said, he would, might have been running on cues. Uh, talk about Alex McKinnon and, and what he brings to you. Yeah, well, it worked out that we we kind of had our eye on the guy that we wanted him to come face first. Um, they had a, they had a returning kid that was was struggling with off speed that day, and McKinnon's got an above average slider. Um, so we felt like no matter what situation we were going to send Jake back out there, but no matter what situation they were in, we were going to bring Mac in to face that guy. And because we wanted him to have some success early. Um, and he, he's, he's been in this, this is Cabell right here, the guy that we wanted him to face. And um, yeah, he threw 20 pitches, eight, 18 sliders, but that one was supposed to be a slider that got crossed up. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. You're right, 20 pitches, only two balls. The first one outside of the zone, and Tev comes out just to make sure everyone's on the same page, runner at second base, right? You got to be sure of that. Yeah. Yeah, and they just didn't have an answer for this. They just, you know, they didn't. The, under the lights, night uh, night one, uh, they have the lead, so they feel fairly comfortable. And, you know, max has been here before. He's the one that got them vic the, the, the win and relief against Virginia a couple years ago. So he's been in its almost exact same spot. No substitute for experience. And there, there you can see that. That pitch, right, Coach, the two-thirds, maybe 75% of the way there. It looks like it's in the hitting zone. And there you see, when it gets to the plate, goodbye. Yeah, from That's the side, it's, yeah, it's amazing from the side, yeah. So he fans one, confidence has to bolster now a righty-lefty uh, matchup here, but, you know, he's able to fan him again after battling through here. That pitch again, falling off the table. Yeah, we're still throwing sliders at this point because I don't, I don't really, I'm not interested in throwing, you know, the, the, the normal traditional change up to a left-hander in this, in this scenario. Um, we're just rolling with what's working. Exactly. It's, it's uh, obviously the, the right approach. There he gets him again, swinging over the pitch. 
And, you know, I got to think the energy in the infield, everyone is ready to go that, you know, we're still in this game. If we get out of this inning, we're a run down. Yeah, right. So now you get with two down and an 0-1 count. Had a left-hand hitter way out in front of that one uh, before eventually Alex able to, uh, to take him in the glove. And I would assume after strike three here, there's got to be a, a surge of energy in your dugout knowing that, hey, we scratch across one, maybe we can get to extras, we get more than one, we might come in here and steal one. Yeah, I mean, I think we felt that way the whole game. I, I think exactly. there wasn't a point up to this point where we didn't think that we were going to score. We were facing a first rounder. I mean, the guy that they threw against us is going to be the top 10 picks probably. So the fact that, and we were taking good swings off of them, we just, you know, we're, it's our first game. So we knew if we could get, if and when we could get to their bullpen, if we could get them to blink first, we would score runs because our offense is our strength. Um, so, you know, they just kept throwing really good guy after really good guy. And then, you know, we'll get there. But in the top of the ninth, that's when they blinked. Yeah, it's, it's uh, down to the final uh, three outs. The, the Seminoles, they, they go to the bullpen. And uh, Bryce Hubbard, freshman from, from Windermere, comes in. Uh, freshman, so you, you don't have a lot of info on him. What are, what are your hitters' approach when, when you go in down by a run leading off the end? Well, it's interesting because we had a left-hander, Marty Cole, leading off. And, uh, you know, Spatty and I talked about whether or not we wanted to pinch hit in this situation. And I, I just felt like Marty was going to have a great at bat. You know, we both talked about it. And I said, Marty, make it as uncomfortable for this guy as you possibly can. Um, scoot up on the plate. He's a freshman. We can rattle him. And I think he walked him on five pitches. And then that, that was the beginning of the end because you bring a freshman in to close game one of his collegiate career. And I don't know. I don't care if you're at Florida State or you're the New York Yankees. That's not an easy thing to do. Right. Now, here, here we go as, as you bring in uh, the pinch runner. So Dawson called on to, to drop down the bunt, and you've seen it happen a couple times. As this one in tight just glanced off the bat. We're now with two strikes on him. You got to take off the bunt, but what, what does a young man do? But uh, he answers by by drilling one into left field. We've seen it a lot of times, right? Coach, where that happens. Yeah, right. Not now. No. I mean, I, I don't know. We didn't put on a sack bunt right there. We were trying to get him to bunt for a hit because we don't like giving up outs. And he just didn't work out. So whenever you do that, like, you know, you give the guy confidence in, in him to – to get on base. So at no point was he disappointed that he didn't get it done. It's just, Hey, now you got two strikes now battle. The kid wasn't landing any off speed at all. And after that at bat, the interesting thing was, is that the top of our order saw that, that he wasn't throwing strikes with a, with a slider. And so you can eliminate everything with a fastball and anybody can hit a fastball. It doesn't matter how fast it is. So um, as soon as Dawson had that at bat like that, then uh, you know, now you got the big boys coming up, and they navigated that that pretty um, pretty easy. So that was that was one of the things that allowed Dawson to get that to get that that hit was, you know, he's a smart kid. He doesn't make adjustments from at bat to bat. It's pitch to pitch. They make the pitching change, and and here's the situation with first and second, and nobody out. Where I'm assuming that is the sack bunt because it's it's you now you're based away from taking the lead. Is that the thinking? Yeah, I mean we're left on left and. Uh, we got a guy, we can get a guy to third with less than 12. So we got to try to tie the game. So, yeah, that was a straight sack right there. And Benny did Good a hitters job. count here for, for Michael Gabriel, uh, an mm -hmm. NU Hall of Famer's son, probably. You know, I've heard his dad say many times, Coach, and base hitter ball four turns out to be ball four. Good play discipline there. Yeah, it was a great at bat. That was a great at bat. So now they're loaded up for, for your power source and, and West New York native uh, Pete Battaglia. Um, you know, has hit a, a, a ton of home runs and has driven in a lot of players. And, and here, the, the meeting of the mound, um, they're trying to figure out what to do. They make a pitching change. What are some things maybe that you're trying to communicate to Pete in what is a really big spot on opening night? Yeah, well, that's the funny thing is we went – our top of our order was junior, junior, senior, senior, um, and then a really good sophomore. So at, at no point – our guys were smelling blood in the water at this point. Um, you know, so – I wasn't, I was like, this is, this game's ours at this point, because I had heard him getting interviewed and doing press conferences about, you know, these guys that they were using from last year that are going to step into bigger roles this year. And I thought this is perfect because they're going to have to step in right away. And I just don't know that 
you know, our guys are going to allow them to get comfortable in there. So this was one of those guys. Like this guy last year, he struggled a little bit, and they were – I guess he had a really good fall, and they were really looking for big things from him. Uh, but, you know, it's just like anybody. You got to get out there and you got to get the nerves out. And we were just – we were the ones that were calming as they were getting sped up a little bit. Really, really interesting points. Guys could really, you know, paint the black with a fastball. That was a, a, a big pitch. But we talked about plate discipline, and, and maybe you got a call there on, on the 3-1. Not a great camera angle off to the side a little bit. But I think this, your veteran hitter picking up, is it just picking up the spin on this baseball to hold back and, and get you guys on the board. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's exactly right. So a, a freshman or a sophomore swings at this. Uh, a, a senior, a junior and a senior that have been through the fire and played some big games, like that's the difference between experience and not experience. And that's the difference between scoring a run, forcing in a run, and then still having a runner on third base with less than two outs for us to take the lead. That's, that's everything right there. A great look at it there. And when, and when Pete's all, all done with his career, he's going to look at all the RBIs he had, and he'll probably remember that one, right, with the, uh, with the bases loaded walk to, uh, to tie the game up. And, and then here's the Gio, but you know, he got underneath the little infield fly. Is that a situation where the young man's really excited to try and give his team the lead? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. that's the difference. That's exactly what I was talking about. A senior, a senior, junior, senior probably takes that pitch or crushes it because he knows that's what he's getting. Gio's right. a little frustrated. I think he, I think he figured he would get that. And, and, uh, and, you know, I think he just got anxious on it. So Marquesa comes in, falls behind 0-1 and, 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 and nowhere for the, the right-hand reliever from Florida State to put him. Um, I know he wants to swing the bat. It's pretty tough to take four pitches, but he ekes out a walk and you guys get the lead. Yeah, I mean he's got a great eye. He's a he's a great guy for a big power hitting guy. He gets on. He he has the ability to take a walk, um, and and anytime you can do that, it puts a ton of pressure on pitchers to have to get the job done. So that three one goes back to the screen. No further advance than just the ninety feet. And and now, although you look very composed, coach, very nicely done. The fellows around you are pretty excited because you've got the lead now and a chance to extend uh, the lead as, as once again Florida State has to go to the bullpen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I stay calm now. I, use, I didn't used to, but, I mean, if I'm not calm, <laughs> what? Okay. if I'm nervous, everyone else is nervous. So um, I just I – was, I was enjoying letting them play the game, and they were having fun doing it. So, um, yeah, they, yeah they, they were executing. I mean, it's easy when, as a coach. When they do everything that you want them to do, then it's easy. You look like a genius, right? So. Yeah, and, and a couple times tonight you have said how it really followed – kind of the script that that you played the game with with your assistant coaches before you know leading up to this game a lot of it followed the script and and now we get to a a, a big insurance run here as uh marcus able to uh, beat out uh, an infield ground ball to the hole in short again great speed the purple eagle way yeah he was he got a good hard 90 that was that was a big one that that third run um you know, that's that's the run where you kind of take a deep breath and go, there's no way they're scoring two runs on McKinnon. So, um, yeah, it was a good hard 90. Our guys ran the bases well there. Um, you know, and, again, like, we can have the best game plan in the world, uh, but the players play, and they did a great job beating out, um, you know, running hard 90s, playing the game hard, executing their their role, their job. Coach, I want to throw one thing in there. We can see it just behind first base there. Some Purple Eagles fans uh, either transplanted and lived in Florida or made the trip. You had some, you know, support, some support there during the comeback. Oh, yeah, we traveled well for that. I mean, there was probably, I don't know, between parents and, and alums, probably, you know, 40 or 50 people there. Fantastic, fantastic. On the, I looked it up the 14th of February. It looks like it was a nicer day. And night down there in uh, in Florida than it was uh, up here. Uh, oh yeah. Seven no strikes out to end that big uh, uh, top of the ninth. Talk a little bit. I know you're going to bring McKinnon back out. Any concerns at all about the long time in the dugout? Did he do anything to stay fresh? No, not really. I mean, he's he's a gamer. He uh, uh, actually he showed somebody his hand while he was waiting, and it was like it was like this. So he's got the ability to let the adrenaline run through his body at the right time and not at the wrong. So. Yeah, he was, you know, and this was a big at bat for me because I thought, 
you know, he just went right through that guy. So I, I there was at that point, uh, there was no thought of me, you know, making making a change at this point. This at bat is remarkable because this is this is three straight. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Uh, batter didn't get the bat off his shoulder, and is that just he looking for something else, or those pitches are just too good? Well, I think in that situation, it's some at some coaches will tell their hitters to take to tell a strike. So I think they were taking the first pitch, yeah. and then. Um, you know, I mean, his breaking ball is that good. And it's dark. It's under the lights. I don't know if they practice under the lights. I'm sure they do. But, you know, it's not easy to see spin at night. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. And yeah. it's good. And now you got, you got to remember, he's still facing these guys for the first time. So they, the ones he, the guys he's facing right now, hadn't seen him yet. Um, so they're, they're just as dumbfounded as, as yeah, the, he, the guys that he'd faced before. And he's pounding the strike zone, fly ball, routine fly ball to Benny out and left. Uh, he makes wow. the catch, and then and then truly, this is no opening night win, right, Coach? I think the celebration's on a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know it's going to sound crazy, and I, you know, Florida State's a phenomenal team. We expected to win, so I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play into, hey, this was a generational win. We're we're a Division One baseball team. We go, we go every single time we tow the rubber, we try to win the game and we think we can. So, uh, yeah, they were happy. I mean, that, it, it, what it does is it underscores their hard work. It highlights everything they put in up till that point. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that think it's luck. You know, uh, we, got, we got stomped the next two days, but you can't take the, away the game plan that we had going in and the, the, exec, the way these guys executed. They deserved every bit of it. Yeah, it really was a uh, uh, an exciting win and, and a routine fly ball. The only player of the the six batters that that uh, Mac faced to put bat on ball and bring it into play. But you know, Benny, a football player, he, football player's body, he's going to barrel into his outfield mates, and yeah, I'd get out of his way right about now because the young <laughs> man's fired up and uh, uh, really, really an exciting win for you that night, Coach. Um, that was uh, that, that was good to look at. Um, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, after the game when you're when you're with the team, even though, yes, you had said we feel like we're going to win this game, but maybe any of that post-game flair that you had for them. Yeah, I mean, not really. I just, you know, as a coach, I think you just got to, if you're going to tell them that it's no different, then you got to act like it's no different. Were we happy? Absolutely. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a great win. Have we done it before? Yep, we've done it before. So um, do we do it every time? No. Um, yeah. But I think that's why they, you know, some people say that the, the kids want to play at this level to have the chance to play games like that. And I tell them we want to win games like that. So mm -hmm. it's it's nothing special, you know. Uh, we right. got to toe the rubber against everybody. Was it a great win? Did it, did it like I said, it, it, what it does is it really, um, it makes everything worth it, right? All the hard work and all the, all the 6:30 lifts, the indoor practices, the competing in the fall, the, the grinding to be a student athlete. The trip down there was not an easy trip, and so when good when you when you get you know when you get a win like that, it's it just uh, yeah it feels good because that's great. It gets you off to a good start. Really good, really good, <laughs> coach. We are we are short on time. Thank you so much for carving out some time for us. Uh, uh, certainly was good to look back. Uh, uncharted waters, as we say, we, we wish you good luck, continued good health here, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll catch up again real soon. Thanks. You guys, too. Stay safe. And a lot of thanks to uh, Niagara Head Coach Rob McCoy. For everyone here at Niagara University Athletics, my name is Todd Callen. Thanks so much for joining us, and have a great day, everyone.